Beer is the oldest brewed beverage on the planet. How old? 9,000 years old. And today, the brewski still rules. Look at these huge containers. I'm diving deep beneath the froth of this amber concoction. I'm like a beer astronaut. To uncover why this stuff is the most popular beverage on the planet. Ow! What I reveal will blow your mind. Maybe I ought to close. So pop one open and kick back, because I'm about to make you a beer genius. Hi, I'm Daniel Wilson, and today we're learning all about beer. With a PhD in robotics, I tend to see the world a little differently. I want to know everything. So I'm going everywhere, finding the hidden side of everyday things, revealing it all in the works. Beer is the most popular alcoholic beverage on the planet. The world swigs down about 40 billion gallons of beer every year. That's about 300 billion pints, or enough to fill 60,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. That's a lot of beer. The average American drinker consumes about 22 gallons per year. The planet's number one beer guzzlers? The Czechs. But the United States produces more beer than any other country. 22% of the world's supply. Followed by China, Germany, Japan, and Brazil. Humankind's universal love affair with beer is a puzzle that must be solved. The basic ingredients couldn't be simpler. Water, grain, hops, and yeast. Yet somehow, when combined, build empires. Brew revolution and bring out the individualist with a vengeance. It's the American dream brought to a head. I'm starting my frothy quest in Boston, just a few miles from Plymouth Rock. The truth is, the Mayflower cut its voyage short and made an emergency landing in Massachusetts Bay. You want to know why? Because they ran out of beer. It's true. Today, the tradition continues. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Extreme Beer Festival. Let's hear it one more time. Thank you. I'm at the sold-out Extreme Beer Fest, where the crowned heads of beer are showing their newest concoctions to thousands of their loyal subjects. Festivals like this happen every year all around the world, and it's for one reason, the love of beer. A dude handed it to me. Beer is the ultimate social lubricant. <laughs> People love to drink beer, talk, have a great time. You know, beer is fun. It's my fourth year. Good job. Beer Fest City! All right, flex your liver. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I need you guys to get a single file line for the top. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. I know a good party when I see it. No headache! But what's going on inside my body that makes beer so fun? Now, when I take a swig, beer travels to my stomach and small intestines, where the pressure from the carbon dioxide forces the alcohol to be absorbed 20% faster than other alcoholic drinks. The alcohol hits my bloodstream, then goes to my head, stimulating the pleasure center of the brain. That makes me feel invincible and also impairs my judgment. Okay, myth or fact? The beer goggle effect. The notion that drinking beer makes other people seem more attractive. The truth is, all alcoholic drinks contain the same kind of alcohol, ethyl alcohol, which upsets the balance of two neurotransmitters in the brain, GABA and glutamate creating a depressive effect while lowering inhibition. So you might also say tequila goggle effect. All that from a pile of grain? 
Obviously, the real genius of beer is not in the ingredients. It's in the recipe. To get a good look at how it's made, I'm traveling north to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to the Smutty Nose Brewery, an innovator whose beers keep on winning awards year after year. Smutty Nose is one of about 1,400 craft breweries in the U.S. Together, they make about 4% of the beer consumed in America. Not one of the big guys, but not exactly a homebrew. It's a perfect place to understand how this stuff is really crafted. You know, I look at a lot of what I do, and I think most brewers do, as, as more like being a chef. I always thought of you guys as engineers. Yeah, and certainly at this scale of brewery, uh, there's a little bit of both. The fun part, of course, is the art and combining the different ingredients. So let's see how this process works from beginning to end. Okay, uh, this is our uh, first brawl ingredient. It's malted barley. Malting is the process of soaking grains until they sprout, then quickly drying them. They all gave their lives so that we could drink beer. <laughs> Barley's been used in brewing since the Sumerians invented beer 9,000 years ago. Today, growers harvest 320 million bushels of barley a year. Over 50% is used for food, 40% is malted for beer. Brewers typically buy barley pre-malted. So I can eat these? I can Absolutely, taste these? Absolutely, yeah. Are you messing with me? No, Are you look totally, like an idiot? You okay. can totally eat these, they taste great. A little dry. A little dry, huh? A little dry, yeah. A grinder crushes the barley into bite-sized pieces to increase its surface area. It's then funneled into a thousand gallon fat called a mash tun for the first stage of brewing. So what's going on here? We're going to take our crushed grain, we're mixing it with the hot water. We'll let it sit for about 40 minutes. The liquid at that point, which is called wort, We'll have the color we need and the sugars that we want for fermentation. How many pounds of grain? Uh, we're going to add about 2,900 pounds of grain for this batch. That is one big batch of oatmeal. Yep. <laughs> then at the end of this, we're going to drain that sugary water out. Yep. And what happens to the mash? Uh, the grain itself will get uh, spun out of this vessel and it becomes cattle feed. Oh, all right. Yep. So nothing goes to waste. Nope, happy cows. <laughs> This is the real JT. He's a brewer. You can tell because of the beard. <laughs> so what's going to happen to it now? After a certain amount of time, it starts sparging. Sparge. Which is when I spray water over the top of the grain bed, basically separating the sugar water from the grain husks okay. and the other stuff that's going to be cattle feed. So you can think of the mash tun as a giant insulated colander. Or like a coffee filter. A giant coffee filter. Oh, you caught me traipsing through the primordial beer rainforest. I think I saw a Beerosaurus Rex over there. That's so not funny. Okay, let me see if I got this straight. First, you grow the barley, harvest it, germinate the seeds, then quickly dry them in kilns, a process called malting. Next, you crush the malt and mix it up with hot water, creating the mash. Mashing breaks down the starches into sugar. The grain is then strained out, and the remaining sugary liquid is called wort. No, not wort, wort. The malty sweetness of the wort needs something to balance it. A touch of bitter. It's the key ingredient, the secret spice, that transformed beer from thirst quencher to lifesaver, hops. For thousands of years, the beer recipe was simpler than it is today. It was a sweeter brew and had a shelf life of about one week. Then, in the Middle Ages, German monks discovered that hops had preservative properties. In a stroke of genius, they added it to beer, making those long beer-fueled voyages across the Atlantic possible.